rounds, and now we're getting down to the last couple of rounds right here. And wow, what a la match that last game was. Won by a burn and a crit. That's just peak Pokemon right there. Yeah, really. Po <laughs> Pokemon is as much a game of, of luck as it is skill. Really, sometimes you just gotta play for that. You gotta play for that luck, hope for that burn, hope for that crit. And really, sometimes it just comes to bite you back. Yeah, hey, some people say luck is a skill. You know, it just has to make it work. You need to make some luck sometimes, but, you know, sometimes it's not in your favor. But. That's what separates us from the pros. Yeah, as we go into our, <laughs> as we do go into our fifth round of Swiss here, we are looking at p people who need to win these games, who are looking to make it into top cut. Both of our players for this game are two and two today. So if they want to sniff the top cut, sniff that top eight, they need to win this match right here. And let's introduce them. It's going to be Zane Youssef and Parker Simmons, and their teams typical teams but a few key differences here and there yeah so on zane's team here we are actually seeing a rain team we're seeing pelipper we're seeing urchifu rapid strike entei tornadus landorus and amoongus and that's regular entei not that typical terra or that typical fire entei that we or the rock fire hasuian entei that we've been seeing yeah. terra normal is interesting here Counters out a lot of the weaknesses, but doesn't quite save it from anything either. No, <laughs> it's just it doesn't. normal type. <laughs> doesn't get that. It's not running. Uh, so that Entei, it's got that inner focus. I mean, it's a strong attacker. It really does those fire type attacks really well. Tornadus is interesting here with that bleak wind storm. That's probably why you have Pelipper there to set up that rain. Where you have Pelipper there with to help Urshifu Rapid Strike deal more damage. Yeah, there's some interesting things there. The Pelipper is probably going to be the star of the show there, being run on every single team. But let's see if Parker Sims has anything to answer that Pelipper. Any electric types, any electric moves, or anything at all. But when I look over there, don't see much of anything really that quite perfectly counters it. We see we have the Indeedee female to set up the Psychic Terrain. We have Iron Crown, which is an interesting pick as well, the first one we're seeing. And then we also have the Hatterene, another pairing there, Indeedee Hatterene. We have the yeah. Luna. The Luna. We're, we're sort of seeing a mix of almost three different teams here that you could really run. And the probably team we won't see, sadly, is this Torkoal Lilligan team. Mm -hmm. That team is really dependent on Pelipper not showing up. If Pelipper shows up, Torkoal and Lilligan are a lot of trouble. So I think we're mainly going to look at these top four mons here. We're going to see Ndidi F to set up that Trick Room to pair up with either Hatterene or Iron Crown. Iron Crown's a Pokemon we haven't seen today, but that Tachyon Cutter move is pretty strong. It can do a lot of damage. It's also got Expanding Force. It's got that Booster Energy to boost that. Actually, a special Attack Stat Booster Energy here. Hmm, that's interesting. There, to use the Terra Blast? Could use Terra Blast. It's Terra Water, so Terra Blast could be good here. I don't think we'll see it much, but against that Entei could yeah, be powerful. Could be good, yes. Uh, Ursa Luna. Ursa Luna is always strong. And with this Ursa Luna, it's got Sword Stance. You cannot be sitting there in front of that Ursa Luna. You have to be ready and putting pressure on it. If you let it set up a Sword Stance and it gets into Trick Room... That could be game over for you there. That's true. That Ursula is going to be the sweeper to look out for. You don't want to let him go untended. Once again, we see the Hattery and Terra Water. A lot of Terra Waters on this team. Yeah, but I don't it's... think Terra Water is super out of the ordinary. Because Besi we're seeing a lot of the Water uh, Ogre Ponds. We're seeing the Rapid Strike Urshifu. We're maybe seeing Rillaboom, Moon, but otherwise Water is a pretty safe type to tear into right now. That's fair, that's fair. And then as we get down to the bottom, like you said, we have Lilligan, he's sweet, and Torkoal on the stage there. Sun. Do you think this... You could use potentially the Sun to try and counter out the rain, but it's a risky play. Yeah, I think the Sun team is pretty strong here. We have, we've have we seen Lilligan on a few teams. We haven't seen it been brought yet, but it's got that Sleep Powder. It's got After You to make something else go faster. A lot of Pokemon here that could be good, but I do not think we'll see Lilligan and Torkoal in this first match here. Just trying to bait out. Well, we see Lilligan. Well, we do see <laughs> Lilligan, and we see Cabalion, interestingly. Yeah, the Iron Crown makes its appearance. Yeah, we now. switch out. So what are we going to go with here? We're going to go with a close combat into the Ndidi. Predicting maybe that the Ndidi switches out here. All right. Doesn't have that sun up yet to help Lilligan get faster. Lilligan's actually switching out here. Interesting play. No. Lilligan going out for Ndidi. That's weird that he didn't lead with the Ndidi. Yeah, but...
but maybe they didn't want to make it too predictable on what was going to happen. Definitely keeping them on their toes there. There's the Psychic Seed there, boosting the special defense on the Ndidi. Interesting. Now, you don't see Psychic Seed Ndidi very often. But we are going to see something Terra. We are going to see Terra Tornadus. Tornadus is going to tear into the Steel type. We've seen that Steel typing once before earlier. I wonder why in particular just good defensive typing, I, I, I guess. Oh, chat is right. Torkoal does actually under speed here, so Torkoal would get sun up first before rain, or sun up after rain. Interesting. Chat is right. I am not looking at my speed stats, but that's <laughs> a good point. Torkoal is slower, which means sun would go up second. So you could potentially counter this Pelipper, but there it is. There's the Pelipper, and now you have the Tor Torkoal potentially. Did we see his fourth Pokemon on the Switch screen? Yeah. There's the expanding force. That's going to do a ton of damage. Wow, the, oh, Pelipper. the Pelipper lives. On 1 HP because the focus. With focus Sash. There it is. Which is an interesting item for Pelipper to run. You don't normally see Pelipper with Focus Sash. Bleak Wind Storm goes off, hits both targets. Doesn't do a lot though. Bleak Wind Storm is good, but not enough. What do we see here? Do we see the Trick Room? Or do we see another Switch? That's the question. Here. I wouldn't be shocked if we saw the Switch back to Torkoal. Or if we saw a Switch to Torkoal, get rid of that rain. That is a smart play. You know, you want to try to nerf this Pelipper before you get that Hydro Bump off. But maybe the play is to just try and go fast. You know, take the hit on one of these Mons. And then play it after that. All right. That is true. Weather is, weather is a slow and steady race. It's going to be tough here. What is this move hitting everybody here? I think it's Trick Room. Yo, you're right. It's the trick room. Oh, There's the Tachyon, Tachyon cutter. cutter. Takes out the Pelipper. That's going to be huge. And now it's just this Tornadus left on the field. I'm going to go for another Bleak Wind Storm. I don't think that's going to kill. No, I'd be shocked if Bleak Wind Storm gets the knockout here. Let's see. No, no. both live. Does almost nothing. They are Does a little bit though. of damage, but not enough. And the Trick Room goes up, which is interesting because we know Cabalion is faster. Interesting. Maybe we're going to see a swap out. There's plenty for next. Keeping it. Zane on his toes here. And what do you think he should do here? Go back to the Urshifu while the rain is still up, or maybe even swap to another Pokemon, keep the Urshifu in back. But no, it's going to be Amoongus. I think the play here is to get Torkoal into position. I think they want Torkoal out. They want to do some damage with Torkoal. Going to follow me, protect the Iron, the iron Crown. All right, there it is. There's the follow me. Do we see another Bleakwind Storm, though? Just trying. Take them down little by Mugus little. with a spore into the Ndidi. Really, the Ndidi goes to sleep, but does that matter anymore? I don't Ndidi's think so. not doing much at this point. Bleakwind Storm doesn't get the knockout. Cabalia lives on 12. There's the expanding force with the psychic terrain, and that is going to no, take a bolt the out. Knockout. Wow. What a way. A critical hit as well on the Tornadus to seal the deal. That crit may have mattered. I think that crit mattered there. <laughs> I think uh, crits always matter, even if it's just insult to injury. Yeah. They matter. The crit's the mind game. <laughs> <laughs> and now, with once Mon left on the field, that's going to be the Urshifu. It's the Urshifu. The Urshifu, I think, loses the speed. It's the fastest Mon on the field here. I'm just double checking. Actually, no. This is a very slow Urshifu. So maybe the Trick Room works in the Urshifu's favor with Ndidi asleep. Not going to be doing too much this turn. Move back over the Iron There's Crown. the Expanding Force. Maybe I have my speed stats wrong here again. The Expanding Force gets a knockout. It doesn't matter. Wow. Parker Simmons. What a strong start. All four Mons up and healthy. Not losing a single Pokemon in this battle. Yeah, what a strong play here. I mean, really, that Sun team, he had the Sun team in the back that, if he needed it, was there for him. The Sun, the Lilligant, all of it playing incredibly strong here. If you're, if you're Zane and you know you need to win these next two battles, if you want to make top cut, what do you do? What do you change? Oh, that's the question right now, if you're Zane. Just looking, what do you have to deal with this Ndidi, really? Or what do you have to do deal with the Iron Crown? You don't have all too much, really, in terms... I types. think I think you need best... to bring the en Entei in. Yeah, I think your best bet here is Entei and Landorus. I mean, Landorus will put Entei will really put the most pressure on that Iron Crown. That Terra type of water though really protects it from that Entei. 
So that's the question here. What do you do if you're Zane? It's tough, and I think he just got off to, on the wrong foot there too. Maybe a couple misplays from Parker, but or or, uh, or Zane. I don't quite know. It's very tough. These matches, as we get further into the bracket, are getting tougher and tougher, way more evenly matched. And now, now that you're fighting for entry into this top cut, things are definitely very tense. Yeah, and I think Chats right shot. here. I think you need to bring Landorus. Landorus is really the Maybe that key check here that you have. And Landers, for being so strong, we haven't seen anyone really bring him on yet. We've no. seen a lot of Tornadus. Haven't seen Landers yet, even though he's been on a majority of these teams. Yeah, I think we've actually... I think Landers is maybe the Mon we have seen the most on Team Sheets and never used. <laughs> which, which is kind of wild. <laughs> it's, it's wild. Maybe it's people just experimenting, but, you know, I wouldn't do any experimenting now when you want to make it to this top cut. You're so close. You don't want to give that up. So, yeah, I think we're going to see Landers come out. That would be the smart play. Uh, I, I think if you're Zane here, you can't bring Amoongus. I think Amoongus no. is it's weak to the Iron Crown. It's weak to the Ndidi. That Torkoal is just going to take it out. The Hatterene, if he brings the Hatterene, will take it out. There's really not a place here for Amoongus. And maybe chat will correct me again. But I think the play is just to... You could tear a water on the Amoongus, but that's still not going to do anything. It's still not going to do a lot. And now we move in to potentially our final match, unless Zane can step it up right here. We do see the Entei and the Landorus, both Pokemon that I thought he would need to bring to win this matchup here. Good start on paper, but we'll see how Parker Simmons deals with this one. Now, we're looking up, there's no Sun. The same starter he started off with. We're gonna go for a Terra Oh, the Terra Water, water Terra, Bl Terra Blast. That's gonna hurt going forward. Don't know what Zane's answer is to this. If he terrored right back, maybe a Terra Normal Entei could save himself right here. But otherwise, one of these mods is going to take a major hit. Yeah, this Entei also is running the Assault Vest item, does not have Protect. So it is just going to eat the full blast of this Terra Water, Terra Blast here. It is going to be dicey, but there's a Terra right back. And it's going to be Terra Normal Entei. Ooh, so it's not going to take that super effective attack here. But that Terra Normal really only looking at that Extreme Speed for the damage boost. Terra Normal is an interesting type. Going to get that Extreme Speed. Will it be enough? Not enough. Does half, though. The Sleep Powder goes Sleep powder, off. Sleep Powder miss. Sleep Powder missed. There's the Earth, Earth Powder. powder. And, and it takes him out. out. Wow. Zane. I did not think that would get the knockout. That's an amazing start for Zane. Taking out that... Iron Crown, which has just been a thorn in his side the entire time. Now, Parker, though, able to go with this Torkoal and start the sun. Yeah, that Torkoal's out there now. That Entei is in a bad position. It's got that sun up. That Lilligan is going to be able to go to work with Chlorophyll and just start dealing damage. It's also still got its Choice Band up, which is the interesting fact here. This is looking pretty That Life Orb Lando goes crazy from chat. You know what? That's true. It's true. So, now the question is, how do you deal... Oh, we're drawing the Entei. Oh, depending on what he throws out here, this could be massive. Into the Pelipper. Pelipper's gonna eat that close combat and be totally fine. Oh, it counters the sun as well, Chlorophyll. Does counter the sun. Does that change our speed stats here? Oh, but he switched out the Torkoal. Back to the Indeedee. Putting down Psychic Terrain. There it is. Again, there. both these players fighting for their lives here to make it into top cut. They need both of them are at two and two. If they want a chance to get to top cut, they need to win this match. There's the second seed boosting the protect on Landorus. Now we're seeing what's gonna happen here. There's a close combat. It is Ooh, it does it, a lot more a lot than I thought it would do. It's the crit! That crit matters. That <laughs> crit matters. Going forward, this Pelipper might be on his last legs here. The trick room. Now, what does this Lilligan uh, Chat, do? I will inform you, Landris is faster than Lilligan here. That is the debate here. Landris is faster based on these stat spreads I'm looking at. Now, that trick room could be massive here for Parker. He needs to get it up in time before this Pelipper might just blast him right away. Oh, Landris goes back. back. Now we'll go back. There's the Amoongus. Amoongus. 
interesting pick, but good support Pokemon for Pelipper. There goes Pelipper. Never mind. Back to Entei? To Entei? Yes, it must. There it is. Entei is. Oh, I'm bad. looking at things wrong. I just can't read stats today. I've been having that trouble twice. <laughs> but speaking of trouble, Entei is put to sleep oh. after the switch out. And now the Eating trick room is up. up. This is looking like it's all going in Parker Simmons' <laughs> way right now. As Trick Room's up. Only thing he doesn't have is Helping rain. Hand. It is asleep. He's trying to get, try the close combat again. If he switches to Pelipper once again, it's going to still do enough to kill, I believe. I think, I think with that helping hand, it will knock out Pelipper. Let's see. There's switch out. Does not switch. He's going to stay in. All right. Oh, the Spore, spore comes out. Puts the... Puts the Indeedee to sleep for some reason. Trying to take out the support. Before well, I can't out. put Lilligan to sleep. Oh, he can't yeah, support can't put Lilligan to sleep here. There it is. Close combat. Gets Takes the knockout out. on Entei. Defense falls. And Entei falls as well. <laughs> yeah, that Entei going down is not great. Lander is still in the back. Pelipper still in the back. What comes out next? My guess is Lando. Parker's not in a great spot right now, though. Sure, he just took out a Mon, but still just a 3v3 with Ndidi asleep. That is just going to be dead weight on your team. Yeah, Whoa. switch into Torkoal. Get rid of that rain. Get Ndidi. Get that. <laughs> with the sleep powder again! If he can get a few more sleeps in here, he'll be in an amazing spot. And you want this Torkoal in here to deal with the Amoongus as well. Yeah. The double sleep here would be absolutely insane. It's rare, but it's 65% accuracy on that sleep powder. It's not impossible. It's the drought. Comes through. Paul and Puff does nothing to Torkoal. Okay, sludge, sludge bomb. bomb. Yo! It lives with the focus ash! Well, that does the sleep powder hit. This is gonna be potentially this Lilligan's last sleep move. Sleep powder hits! What a move from Parker Simmons. Parker is playing wild out here with the double sleep. And now with Torkoal on the field, this eruption is gonna totally mess up anybody left on the field. Close combat into the Amoongus, cause sure, why not? <laughs> I think you might just be expecting the Expecting switch. a switch maybe into Pelipper? But even then, maybe you'd go for the Solar Blade cause that close combat's not gonna do much either way. No, but this eruption is going to do a massive amount of damage. What is Parker's That Amoongus will game? try and go for the knockout. But I do believe Torkoal will go first here. I think we are still in Trick Room. We are still in Trick Room. All right. Switch into the Ndidi. Oh, the there goes the Landorus. All right, the Drizzle is going to come out before the eruption. That's a smart play. Going to try and keep this Amoongus up and healthy. Lilligan going to be swapped out for the Ndidi. What right. a move here. There it is. Maybe try and wait for the... There's wait. the eruption. Wow. Doesn't take out Pelipper. Does not take out Amoongus. Because the sunlight's gone because of the switch to Pelipper. That's an amazing move from Zane. And gets the spore onto Torkoal. It's a very sleepy match, but you can't stay asleep for long with how crazy this is about to get. Oh boy, oh, Parker in what an do you awful do? position. Trick Room also just ran out. Oh no. Oh, if you're Parker, that's not what you wanted to see. You're begging for one of these Pokemon to wake up. but They won't wake up. They'll be asleep for one turn guaranteed. Indeed, he needs to wake up, hit that Dazzling Gleam. Needs to take out this Pelipper. If he gets rid of the Pelipper, there's a chance. Sure. Trick Room is still up. I'm being corrected. All right. Now, there it is. I think I think Psychic Train ended last turn. Yes, it did. All right, Little getting back in. Maybe to take a hit. Maybe to try and get all back in things. There's Pulp Ball. Little again. Little goes down. Now, indeed, he snooze. One more turn. If Parker can just get past these two raid bosses here. Hurricane. Oh, Does boy. a lot. And now Trick Room's now down. Now Trick Room is over. And Torkoal comes back out, cancels the rain. But 
Regardless. Sun goes back up. Trick Room goes down. Still Trick Room goes down. Sun is up. Raid is down. Go for the Heat Wave. You won't wake up this turn, but you gotta hope. Indeed, he's setting Trick Room back up. It needs to wake up. One of these Pokemon Gonna try need to wake. Torko. If no one wakes up this turn, this is gonna go Zane's way. Now, Sun beating down. Have we seen a Terra on either side so far? I don't. We saw we... Terra Normal on Entei. We saw Terra Normal. We saw Parker. Terra Water oh, at the beginning of the match here. You're correct. It's no Terras. This is just playing old Pokemon from here on out. Right, we're swapping back to the lander. He's prepping the rain to try and get rid of this drought. Because yeah. he won't be able to set it up again. Polypuff. Indeed he lives. Torkoal's Torkoal still asleep. asleep. Indeed he needs to wake up this turn. Torkoal sleeps. Indeed he woke up! Gets Trick Room off! And now this Torkoal needs to wake up. Because indeed he has one more move left in it. But after that, it's going to be all coming down to this Torkoal. If Torkoal wakes up. Get a helping hand going eruption. all in. Or I think you have to go all in. You gotta go all in. You have to go all in on this, Parker. It's all or nothing. If he doesn't wake up here, that's the game. Let's if see. If Torkoal it. wakes up, it's get, but Pelipper will probably switch in. I'd be shocked if Pelipper doesn't switch in here. It he doesn't. doesn't. Pelipper doesn't switch in. Does he wake up? Torkoal. It's time Torkoal! to rise and shine, Torkoal! And with the eruption! And look at the double! Out. Look at that! This game is not over! And now, it, a, a, a 2v3 has turned into a 2v1 in Parker Simmons' favor. And now, Zane... Parker is playing out of his mind. Oh, no. What, what a call to try and just get the helping hand eruption. And with Trick Room, I believe that this Pelipper is moving last. Too fast for its own What good. an insane turn of events. What a turnaround from Parker. Look wow. at that, the eruption to end things. What, what a, a match. Parker takes the set to nothing. Wow! <laughs> he's just saying, he's probably saying my heart was racing. <laughs> it was all, he bet it all on black, and Torkoal woke up. What an amazing end to our pools. And congratulations to Parker Simmons. And I'm sorry, Zane, that is going to be it. He did not make the cut, but what an amazing game he played today. He fought his heart out. He had the lead in that game. He played everything correctly. But that Torkoal. Yeah, that... <laughs> a little too... Too much coffee. Parker was playing just super aggressively. Didn't was just gonna go with it. If he doesn't, if he wakes up, then he's fine. If he doesn't wake up, he loses that match. Very intense. We will see if that is enough for Parker to get into our top eight. We'll see. If not, this is some good momentum for Parker to go into tomorrow with a three and two record. Take some momentum with him. We'll probably feel good. I mean, we don't know how the rest of his games went today or who he faced, but. Ending today with a positive record is always a good thing. Again, this is, a two, day, this is two days in a row of mid-season events. You can come back tomorrow. You can play better. Definitely. The two days allows so much more variety to come out with the teams. And it's just good vibes all around. It really lets everybody get to know each other very well. But just to recap that match even further, that came down to a gamble. The helping hand on the sleeping Torkoal. I, yeah. I can barely believe that happened. That could have gone... Total other way. We could have been here in game three, but no, that was the early run from Parker Simmons. And what gameplay from him? He was in the losing position from the start there. His, the extreme speed, all the things just did not go his way. And wow, he managed to bring it back from the brink of ruins. Absolutely. I think I think Parker played really well that match, but all, what he needed to do, or sorry, Zane played really well that match. What he needed to do was put that Pelipper in a turn sooner. He doesn't switch it. He doesn't switch out. He leaves Pelipper into the end, but if he puts Pelipper in, maybe that eruption doesn't get the double knockout as it's doing a le lot less damage. You're right. So it's hard to say. Sometimes you just got to take the chance, look back, and go into tomorrow thinking, I can do better tomorrow. Yeah, you got to try and recap, but wow. What great gameplay all around. I can't believe that was, I think, the loudest I've screamed here yeah, on that was, this stream here. <laughs> that was an intense final game. Again, those players fighting for their lives. Again, Parker makes the call. He says, 
my Torkoal is going to wake up. I need to play like my Torkoal will wake up and plays it and gets the victory off of it. He has that bond between him and his Torkoal. <laughs> I can just imagine the anime about that Torkoal. So many good stories there. What a way to end that last round. And I believe that's the end of Swiss, no? Yeah, that is the end of our Swiss rounds. There, there are a few more games just finishing up, but we are done our Swiss. Then we will go into our top eight finals bracket. You can see a few of our games still going on there. We'll see who makes top cut here today. And listen, if you want to be here for a next tournament, you're looking at the May long weekend, the 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th. It's a four, we're calling it our Tetra Midseason Showdown. It is going to be an intense four-day event. We'll have more details on housing at residence if you're not from the Windsor area. So keep your eyes out for that. We'll share that more info with you all shortly. And is entry still open for tomorrow in case there's some people locally watching? Yeah, if you're a local to the Windsor area, you can still come down tomorrow. We start at 2 p.m. tomorrow. Registration opens. It's on the back there. Mm -hmm. Opens at 2 p.m. Come, try out, have some fun. Win a trophy, win some prize yeah. money. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of fun to be had here and a lot of fun opportunities. You can make so many friends. Everybody here is so friendly. I've been talking with people out there. Everybody's open. Everybody loves Pokemon here. You already have a topic you can all talk about. But overall... Today's been great so far, but that's just the end of Swiss. We'll be right back with the top cut of the best of the best after a quick break.